Hello my friends, welcome back to a new video where we are going to explore the infinite possibilities of the ESP32 microcontroller. When developing a new environmental sensor based in Arduino with data logging functionalities, especially under water sensors, one of the main drawbacks is to recover the data from the SD card we use. Usually the accessibility of the SD card is not easy, even if you have invested a lot of time in the design of the PCB to make the data recovery easier. In the same way, Depending on how we set up the code, it can even corrupt our file system. Tons of kilobytes of information lost in Neverland, together with my socks lost in the washing machine. However, new microcontrollers with integrated Wi-Fi, as my friend ESP32, could have the potential of directly accessing this information via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, making the data recovery wireless. Sounds magical! As you may know, if you follow me, I recently started using this microcontroller for EOT applications. Currently, I'm just trying its potential, to soon start developing my own boards for data logging and sensing applications. Subscribe to don't lose these future videos. In the past, I used other microcontrollers to retrieve data via Seria, even using my own software to interact with them. For me it's not a problem opening a sensor, I have the tools, but it's the main complaint of other users. They do not want to interact physically with these devices. I guess that they want too many science fiction movies. As you know, when more complex the system, more associated problems. So, considering the integrated connectivity capabilities of the ESP32 microcontroller, is there a way to exploit it to achieve non-contact downloading and configuration of all field sensors? After researching and trying myself, the answer is yes! And it is fast and so far reliable. So prepare your working tools, because today we will use our Wi-Fi powers to download data wirelessly from our sensors. With our ESP32 microcontroller, we could make a web server to download, download or delete our files without the need of using Seria or extracting the SD card. Imagine the possibilities. We could even embed our sensor in epoxy and still recover our files. And together with a wireless charger, never open our field data logger or sensor again. So here is my plan. I'm going to build a small data logger with a sensor based in ESP32, including an auto-powering circuit and a digital sensor and a magnetic grid switch. This sensor is going to work in two modes. The data logging mode, where the data will be collected and saved in an onboard SD card and will turn on and off periodically according to the sampling time storage in the SD card. The second mode will be the downloading mode, where the user will initiate it using a magnet and it will start a web server where to upload, download or delete files in the SD card. That is to say, recover data or upload the new configuration parameters for the sensor board. The web server code is based in text notes of David Bird. However, we have simplified its performance and adapt to our needs. Check the original code by David in the links in the description together with the downloading links of the modified version. So it's not a simple plan. We will start slowly. First, I will show you the web server performance, connecting only the SD card module to the SP32, to after move to the real use case, a real data logging sensing application. The connections of our ESP module to the SD card module are simple, just a classical SPI connection. Only things to take into consideration is the possible need of pull-up resistors depending on the SD module we use and the pins used in our microcontroller module to perform our connections. To identify the correct pins in the ESP32 board, we can always use Arduino ID. We connect the 3.3V power to power, ground to ground, SCK by default to the PG18, MISO to the pin G19, MOSI to the pin G23, and then we select any free digital pin for the CS, in our case, pin 16. Let's solder these five wires. And voila! Connections done. Let's see now the code and its incredible performance. This code is a little long, due to the server managing functions, so we will only analyze its principal components. 
First, we include the libraries, those necessary to manage the Wi-Fi connectivity, the EPS32 web server library that will make our lives easier when designing the web server, the ESPM DNS library to resolve the address of the HTTP web server hosted by the ESP32, then the file CSS.h that contains the style of our HTML web server together with the HTML code that is repeated in the different pages of the server, like for example the header, and the library to manage the SD card and the SPI connections. You can modify the CSS.h file to give a personal touch to your web server. It's just HTML coding. Then we define the variables. The object web server with the port 80 corresponds to the HTTP port. We define the name of our web server. We define the pin used for the SD card and a Boolean variable that will track if it is possible to access to the SD card. In the setup, we initiate the serial mainly for debugging. We initiate a soft access point in the ESP32. This means that the device creates its own Wi-Fi network and access a hub for the other devices. Crazy and amazing at the same time. Crazy. After we define the name of our server, we initiate the SD card and we define the URLs that the server will have. For example, the first lines indicate that when a server receives a HTTP request on the root path, it will trigger the SDDR function. Upload path, the file upload function, and so on. And finally, we initiate the server. In the loop, we only need to listen for client connections. Regarding the functions, we have those functions that will trigger the server. For instance, the sddir that will print in the home page the list of the files and it will allow us to download and delete any files in the SD card, or the file upload function that will handle in another page the file uploading. The other functions are used when interacting with the different buttons of the server. Best way to learn is to try and modify the code yourself. As you know, all the code as well as useful links are available in the description. So let's unload the code and see its performance. As you see, now we can see a new Wi-Fi network in our computers and we can access using the password defined. By accessing to the URL defined in the code, we will access to the server. In the home page, all the files of the SD card are listed, we can download them or delete them. If we access to the configuration option, which is the upload page, we will be able to upload any file to the SD card. So what do you think about this? I believe that it's incredible. But wait a moment. We said that we want to use this for accessing to our sensing data logger. So no problem, let's make a real test case. We just need to build a sensing data logger and change a little the code. For this next step, we will use the already mounted board together with the auto-powering circuit that we built recently in our channel. This will allow the device to switch off and on automatically and that combines a battery, RTC3231 module, together with a Pololu2808 power switch. Check the video in the link. A digital sensor board that combines the AHT20 humidity and temperature sensor and the BMP280 pressure and temperature sensors. Some resistances for building a voltage divider, 10 and 40 kilo ohms, and a 1N4001 diode or similar. Yes, we are going advanced today. A rich switch for testing a common switch will also work. And a magnet. The magnet is the wow factor in the circuit. <laughs> Let's design the connection for all these things. As you see, this time I'm using labels to show you the connections. As with so many components, the use of wires will be a mess. We will skip the SD card connections as we have already covered them. We could also skip the auto powering circuit because you already have a video in the channel. However, let's see how to connect it to the AESP32 board. As you know, the Pololu switch will handle the automatic power off and on of the circuit. For that, we are going to connect the alarm of the RTC module into the switch pin of the Pololu board. This will activate the power whenever the alarm is triggered. In the same way, the ESP32 board can handle the on and off functionalities of the Pololu board by means of two digital pins, the G2 and the G15. It's time the ESP32 board wakes up, will update the time of the alarm of the RTC, and once it gets and records the data, it will automatically switch off the ESP32 module by triggering the G2 digital pin. Sensor and RTC modules are both connected to the board by means of a E2C connection where SDA corresponds to the pin G21 and the SCL to the pin G22. And finally, the MAGIC, the Web Server Activation Circuit. In normal performance, the sensor will switch on and off periodically collecting data, but if we trigger the read switch with a magnet, the circuit will also turn on. 
However, it will trigger a positive signal to the pin in G4. That will indicate to the sensor to switch the mode to the servo mode. To reduce the voltage that comes directly from the battery to this pin, we will just need a simple voltage divider. This will reduce the voltage between 3.3 and 2.6 volt depending on the battery charge, and the diode will avoid the reverse voltages to the working mode pin when the device switches on during logging mode. As the diode will reduce the voltage in 0.7 volts, during this performance we will directly power the system in the 3.3 volts pin. So it seems complex, but it's not. Just download the sketch and take your time to analyze it. Let's solder this monster in super fast mode. Ok, ok, so we have already our circuit soldered, let's explore the modifications to our previous code. As you see, together with our previous libraries, we added the DS3231 Max library modified to work with the ESP32 microcontroller. You can find the library together with the code in the link in the description, and the other free libraries to control the sensor's usage. You can directly download them from Tools Manage Libraries menu. After we include the definition of the digital pins involved in the process and that they are not assigned by default in the board, the pin that is going to be connected to the off pin of the Bololu board, G2, to the off pin, G15, and the pin that is going to track the presence of the magnet. We also define a name for the sensor, just to track the data that we upload to the SD card, a data string that we use to store the data that we after lock periodically into the SD card, and a default sleep time for the auto power circuit control, as an example, 60 seconds. We finish defining the RTC object and the variables to store time and the time string conversions. During the setup, we define the performance of digital pins, of unknown pins like outputs and work mode as a digital input. We initiate the card as before, we initiate the RTC, clearing alarms if they are present, and we also initiate the sensors. And after, we check if the working mode pin is activated. If that is the case, then we initiate the server. If not, we just proceed to the loop. In those cases that we have the magnet attached, it may move. So to avoid sudden switch off of the board, we activate momentarily the on pin to turn on the Pololu switch. In the loop section, we initiate another loop while the magnet is connected. This will just listen for client connections to the server. After we remove the magnet or without the magnet, we read the sleep time from the configuration file of the SD card if it is present. So yes. We can change the sleep time without the need of submitting a new code to the board, just changing the configuration file. Great. We get the data from the sensors, and we store the data at daytime in a string that we will save in the data log file of the SD card. After we set the new alarm that will turn on the device in the following measuring cycle, and we send the digital signal to the off pin of the Pololu switch, turning off the device. So let's summarize the performance while we upload the code to the board. Without the magnet, the device will enter in logging mode. It will periodically wake up, read the sleep time, get the new data and store a cheat in the SD card, update the alarm and switch off. If the magnet is plugged, it will initiate the web server mode, opening the connections to upload and download the files. And once we remove the magnet, it will enter to the data logging mode, switching off the device after saving the data and updating the alarm. Seems magic. As you see, the code has already been uploaded. If we remove the USB cable, it will start collecting data every 60 seconds. And voila, it works! Let's now plug the magnet. As you see, the ESP32 has initiated the soft access point and if we enter to the server URL, we can see the available files. If we download the data log file, we will see values every 60 seconds. So let's enter a new configuration file to change the sampling rate to 10 seconds. After we upload, it will immediately start recording every 10 seconds.
Perfect. Everything worked out. Imagine the possibilities. We can further increase the configuration parameters and we will not need to open our device never again. Ok, maybe just for charging the batteries if we don't develop a wireless charging system. So this is for now. All the code, libraries and connection drawings are available in the description. I hope you like it. And don't forget to support the channel and our work by subscribing, liking and commenting. Before leaving, I would like to thank all of you for your support. We already reached 100 subscribers. For next video, I will prepare a special giveaway. See you in the next one.